Keep on plugging along in this 30 days of Taker video series. 30 days, 30 videos celebrating the legacy and career of one of the true icons in the history of both WWE and professional wrestling. That is, of course, Mark Calloway, who we all know better as The Undertaker. Make sure you check out the other videos that have come up so far in this very video series and know that I've got a lot more coming. We're only on day number seven here, so you do the math. That's 23 more videos to go. You may not have asked for it, but you're getting it. So smash that subscribe button if you're your first time checking it out, this channel, so that way you can get updated whenever I put up these new Taker-related videos. And today's topic, I wanted to take a look back on the original Undertaker gimmick. Going back to his debut of Survivor Series 1990 and really the first couple of years of The Undertaker and really kind of deep dive for a few minutes and examine whether or not that gimmick would actually have a chance of succeeding and or thriving in today's professional wrestling landscape. Like, would that original, true, pasty-faced, eye-makeup, Paul Bearer-led, Undertaker gimmick work in 2020's world of professional wrestling? And I think it's an interesting conversation to have because sometimes you talk about some of these gimmicks and you say, well, Hogan's gimmick of the 80s wouldn't work today. Probably would not. You say, the Ultimate Warrior, would his gimmick really connect or work today? I would argue potentially it could because it evoked, you know, superhero type of thoughts and, you know, he would be so different. Like, it certainly could work. The Macho Man would work in any era. Andre would have worked in any era. Like, some guys you can more easily point to their gimmicks and say, that would have had to have been adjusted or just flat out not worked then. But maybe the talent would have been good enough still to get over it. And then you have other gimmicks that you say, I could absolutely see where that gimmick is kind of timeless and it really would have worked. Um, you might have spun it a little differently, but it certainly could have worked. I think a Sergeant Slaughter would be another example of that. That gimmick would work wonderfully, I think, in uh, the 2000s. Now, it might not be as relevant, but in the 2000s, especially around the time of the beginning of the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, you know, it probably would have worked uh, really, really well. But when you think about the Taker gimmick and the original incarnation of it, I absolutely think that it would have had a chance to succeed and even thrive in today's professional wrestling landscape. And I look at a character like The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, as evidence of that. Because I look at that Fiend character, and you do some of the mystical, kind of supernatural, off-the-wall hokey type of production and presentation things with that character and it's gotten over with the fans and it's really resonated at least with a segment of the WWE fan base might not necessarily be equating into drawing a bunch of eyeballs to the television screens but the character is over this new spin on Bray Wyatt the fiend gimmick the fiend character works and it's gotten over and I think when you look at The Undertaker and that original gimmick, like, let's take that original gimmick in 1990 and transpose it here 30 years later to 2020. Imagine that character debuting at Survivor Series 2020. Now, it would be tough because you wouldn't have fans in, the, fans in attendance to be able to react and give you some real type of feedback in terms of how the character initially connects and resonates. But, you know, here would be a guy... You're looking at this big, imposing 6'8", six, 6'9", six, dude. And especially if you're talking about bringing him out. Let's say you brought him out from day one with Paul Bearer the un and the real original Undertaker and Paul Bearer as his manager. Like, I can't imagine that gimmick not getting over or not succeeding. And I would argue that it would absolutely hit the ground running and totally thrive. Because... The Fiend character to me has shown that there is still a place for those type of characters in professional wrestling. There is still a passion for wrestling fans, both mainstream casuals and the more hardcore fans, to have a gimmick or a character like that. It's a bit of a palate cleanser, especially when you look at what the business is now and how it's gotten smaller and it's so much more about the moves and the matches than it is about the moments and the memories. Like now you've got somebody that represents something different. It would be a return back to more of an old school type of philosophy. An old school done right can absolutely work in a modern environment. There is no question about that whatsoever. 
And now you're talking about, let's say, with that original Undertaker gimmick and character, with Paul Bearer as the manager. Now you're talking about having the funeral parlor. That's not just some regular talk segment that other people have. Like, that would feel so much different than anybody else and what they would do. You're talking about, as well, The Undertaker being this big, menacing dude, but is legit enough of an athlete in the ring that he can do some fancy and impressive stuff, whereas his basic matches would feel different every time because they would go to great lengths to structure them to be different. He's a guy that could go out there and work a variety of styles of different matches against all different sizes and styles of wrestlers, and in particular, when you look at the decreasing size of the overall roster of WWE over the past decade plus, Taker's best work in some cases came against the smaller guys. Much easier for him to tell a story. The dynamics work better. So imagine him coming into today's WWE and he's working with a Rey Mysterio when Rey's towards the end of his career. Or he's working with a Seth Rollins or an Adam Cole or a Daniel Bryan or any number of guys. I think it would work, and it would work every bit as well as it did 30 years ago. A perfect example to me sometimes of certain characters, certain gimmicks, certain performers are just truly timeless. And you talk about all the mystical stuff that you could do from a special effects standpoint, from a production value standpoint. Now imagine how much you could ramp that up in 2020 compared to what you were doing at the beginning of the 90s and then throughout the Monday Night Wars and the Attitude Era. Oh my goodness, like the possibilities would be endless. And if you had never had The Undertaker before, imagine how different it would feel in 2020 at a time where so many of the guys look the same, they walk the same, they talk the same, they move the same, they act the same, they wrestle the same. Now here would be something starkly different staring you smack dab in the face. It would be hard to deny. I think the bigger challenges with an Undertaker gimmick like that in modern wrestling now is the risk of overexposure and overuse. It is something that has afflicted big men throughout the years, whether it be Big Show or The Kane, and I think in some ways a guy like Braun Strowman is falling victim to that now. Like sometimes those big guys, those attractions like that, work for a period of time, but you can overexpose them and overuse them and they lose some of their specialness and they lose some of their flavor and their appeal because they're not as unique when you see them all the time. And my worry for a character like The Undertaker coming out new in 2020 is it would be so different and it would resonate so incredibly well and the feedback would be so overwhelmingly positive at the beginning. And if you feel like I'm wrong on that, you can feel free to chime in in the comments, absolutely. I just don't think that I would be in this case. If I am, I am. Like, I could be reading the tea leaves wrong here, but I would anticipate, like, the theme character worked and got over really well and you got great feedback on it. I can't see how it would be any different with The Undertaker. It might be even better. Because not only would you have The Undertaker and all that he represents, but now you throw Paul Bearer into the mix and you've got a legit manager who sounds different, who looks different, who acts different. That is the freaking mortician. Both on screen and in real life. Like there would be an element of mystery there. And imagine in a world where there is no kayfabe anymore and people are spilling secrets all the time. To have this kind of magical, mystical character that doesn't really say much. You don't know much about him. He doesn't have social media. He doesn't sit there and go out and make all these appearances and humanize himself. Like, my God, I can't imagine how that wouldn't work and that wouldn't get over big and how Taker, within his first year of debuting in 2020, wouldn't be a top star and a guy you'd be talking about wanting to win the Royal Rumble and go on to main event and win a world title at WrestleMania. Like, even when you just look at the roster now, like, it would be something. Like, imagine young in his 20s Taker, new gimmick, going against Roman Reigns at Mania or a Brock Lesnar or any number of guys. Like, that would be fantastic. And again, the character would be so different from anything else you see. You could do so many things from a production standpoint. You know, Paul Bear adds a huge piece that is largely missing in professional wrestling today, not just in WWE, but across the board. The lack of quality, effective managers is something that significantly hinders and hurts the product. I don't think anybody disagrees with that. We wish we had more quality managers to hype up some of these guys. Imagine what you could do with Taker with somebody like Paul Bear serving as his Paul Heyman. Now imagine the build-up to a WrestleMania match. 
It's the original Undertaker versus the tribal chief Roman Reigns. It's Paul Heyman and it's Paul Bear. Think about the magic that you could make just on the microphone on the loan between Paul Bear and Paul Heyman. Think about how well those two alone could work off of each other. Like, I want to see it. So, outside of the risk of overexposure, outside of the risk of if Taker was coming up in 2020, he might have social media and he might do the appearances that would humanize him and therefore take some of the mystery, the mystique, the intrigue away from the character. Like, I think that character, character would resonate just as well in 2020 as it did in 1990 when I was a nine-year-old. I have no doubts about that whatsoever. I could be alone in this. I could be on the in the minority on this. But when I look at it fundamentally, you'd be a guy with an actual character. He'd have a mouthpiece. He'd have a talk segment. There's so many different things you could do with him. You do all types of different things from a reduction standpoint. He's big enough to be taken seriously by the casual crowd as a main event player. And he's good enough in the ring where the hardcore fans can tolerate him at the very least. Like, that's a tricky balance to put all of that together in today's wrestling world to make it work, and I think it absolutely could. But I'm curious what you guys think. Would the original Undertaker gimmick, if it was debuting in 2020, get off the ground the same way it did in 1990? Would it work as well? Would he come out of the gates and be a big-time star? Do you think he could potentially even be a bigger star than he was in the early 90s? in this time in wrestling? Or do you think it might not connect, it might not click, and the fans of today might largely take a pass on it? I'm curious to see what you guys think about it, so let me know in the comments. Again, this is just the seventh installment of this 30 Days of Taker video series. We're gonna keep on going, I'm staying consistent, I've committed to this, and by God, I'm gonna follow through the best I possibly can. No, that's loser talk. I'm going to follow through on this. 30 Days of Taker, 30 videos in 30 days, so smash the subscribe button, Share this video series with everybody, and let's rejoice on the reflection of the career and the legacy that is The Undertaker, all right?